Thank you for joining me. Today I am talking about something a little different, but I think it is something that quite a few older women and maybe some younger men might relate to. I am talking about hair thinning or hair loss, which for me, back in 2014, I noticed a very slightly thinner patch on the top of my head. And I did assume at the time that the way I was seeing it was because I was in a different bathroom and the light was different. And when I returned to my own bathroom, I just thought there isn't a problem at all. You know, it's just the light in the room showing things differently and so on. But then as time went on, I did notice that slightly more hair than normal was coming out when I combed it, etc. But again, I just thought, well, maybe I'm a bit sensitive to what is happening. I had always had quite thin and very, very fine hair with quite a high hairline, as you can see. And over time, it did become apparent that there was an issue. Uh, I was losing more hair and you could see it very clearly in our ruby red rug. It wasn't just what came out when I combed my hair. And of course, I learned all the tricks that people in that position do. You know, they look on YouTube, they look around, they find out the best way to comb their hair, to handle their hair so that less of it comes out. And I managed like that for quite some time. But then I decided I would try shampoos that are designed for uh, postmenopausal or menopausal women that have hair loss. You know, at the time I was in my in my late fifties, approaching sixty. And my my menopause had long since happened. However, when I used those shampoos, I noticed that the problem became worse. And they also were not good from a cosmetic point of view because they most of them were from the perspective that we need to stimulate more oil. And I'd always had an oily scalp. So they didn't cleanse my hair properly. And obviously thinnish hair that is especially thinner on the top part uh, that with an oily scalp that isn't cleansed properly did not produce a good look. And also at that point in time, the problem got worse. So I went off to the doctor who, fortunately she takes a special interest in this area, many do not. So she was able to do what most doctors can't do, recognize, you know, recommend suitable shampoos, etc. cetera. Uh, and she also did all sorts of tests to make sure there was no medical condition that was causing this or nutritional deficiency. And it was explained to me that I had some, because it was all over my head, I have some generalized hair loss and some pattern hair loss as well, because it was more so on the top part. Uh, and when that happens, it's called androgenic hair loss and androgenic and generalized hair loss quite often occur on the same head. Uh, it, it's quite normal and she explained to me there can also be the same be the complication uh, that because when we are upset we produce more cortisol which can amplify the effect of the DHT which is the substance that we are sensitive to with androgenic hair loss so there, there can be many things going on at once she recommended a couple of supplements, which helped me, uh, and also some shampoos that were useful, although one of them I couldn't use because I was allergic to. Another one I, that I used, although it cleansed reasonably well, it didn't cleanse quite as well as I would like it. And that also is an issue because if we've got more oil on our scalp, then the oil is the carrier for the DHT and therefore it can make the problem worse if we have that. Of course, many people will not have an oily scalp, but quite a few do. Anyway, as things went on, I managed like that. I also 
when I was in England had private tests done to check my hormone levels. And as expected, because I didn't have any other symptom, my balance of male female hormone was normal. I was possibly a tiny bit estrogen dominant, but only a very tiny bit to an extent that shouldn't make any difference. And most people post-menopause are apparently more estrogen dominant than I. So that couldn't really be thought of as a cause. Anyway, so there was nothing medical going on. You know, a lot of people assume that you must have too much male hormone if you've got androgenic hair loss. But whilst on a rare occasions that can be the case, although the person would have other symptoms, uh, usually it's not the case. And we just, for some reason, become too sensitive to the DHT and have this reaction, which can also be a factor if it is amplified by stress. So I, I would, in recommending the shampoos that I've discovered now, I would say always get it medically checked out first because there might be something that needs correcting. It could be a simple vitamin D deficiency or something like that, but you need to know. So what has happened now in recent times? Well, it started to get a little bit worse again over the last, I would say, year and a half, I noticed it particularly. But again, there was more coming out. There was more of my hair being found around the house. And I was having to be more gentle with handling my hair. I'd long since only combed it using a white tooth comb because that worked better for me. But I, you know, even found that the gentlest handling possible was making my hair come out because obviously the roots were weak. And I looked around for other products and I came across this, which is fairly new on the market here. It's called Pharmaceris H. Stimupurin. It's a specialist hair growth stimulating shampoo. It does cleanse well without stripping the hair. So I think it's a very good product you know, as a beautifying shampoo in itself. But 80% of the people that completed the trials of the company, they had some improvement. And it is a very nice shampoo to use. They also uh, offer a conditioner that I don't use because I only use a conditioner that I leave in that I put on the ends of my hair. But they also provide what they call a scalp spray that you use twice a day that is designed to stop the problem advancing. And once, you know, the new status quo has been established, my understanding is that you can stop using this or use it less. But I feel I have already noticed some improvement and I love the way the shampoo leaves my hair looking the hair loss has certainly returned to what would be normal levels or even low levels. And as I look at the front here, where my hairline had not receded, I've always had a high hairline in keeping with a lot of the ladies in my father's family who did not suffer from hair loss. But uh, kind of at the front, it was like the hairline was less precise it was getting a little wibbly wobbly and that can be an indication and it usually is that the hairline is trying to recede a little bit. So I'm very glad that I look and I see those bits now. They are filled in with like little, little short hairs because I've only been using this for six weeks and I don't look at my hairline now and think that, you know, it's getting a little bit wobbly. So I just thought I would like to recommend this can be brought, purchased in chemists or Apotec here in Iceland. It is not made in Iceland. I will post links below to the website of the company. It is available on Amazon where it achieves rave reviews, but it is not cheap to obtain it from Amazon. Uh, this shampoo, and it's quite, quite a large bottle, it's 250 ml, 
and I only need to use like a five mil at a time. So it lasts a long time, cost about 17, 18 pounds, which for a medical product is quite good. Uh, the scalp spray is a little bit more expensive. Uh, I think it's about 22 pounds in English money for 125 mil, but it really has made such a difference because everything has gone back, you know, everything has gone back to normal. Obviously, I've got to wait and see if my hair actually thickens up. But from the point of view of loss, you know, that has normalized completely. And I would also say that with the little hairs that are growing along my hairline, I am hopeful it is encouraging that my hair may thicken up a little bit. So I just wanted to draw people's attention to something that I have found very useful and very helpful because I know, you know, this is a, is a situation that especially women are obviously not going to like. And, you know, some men, particularly younger men, it says on the packaging that and that the trials indicated it could be used for either gender, but with men it does have to be what they call premature hair loss. So, you know, I'm not saying that it would be helpful, you know, if a man has lost, is completely bald on top or something. I've no idea whether it would be helpful or not, although it might well help with, you know, containing the situation at the stage that it is at, I imagine that it would. So to, to talk further about obtaining this product, it can be obtained in chemists uh, and pharmacists in quite a few countries, but I'm going to post links below also to the company from which I believe it is cheaper to obtain it than on Amazon. Although of course, Amazon is also a readily available source. So thank you for joining me in this rather unusual broadcast. And I hope that some people found it helpful. Thank you.